And then there is another limitation on, on the wagon. And uh, <clears throat> for example, there may be tunnels and other obstacles around the railroad. So you have to stay within a certain loading profile that's defined for each railroad. So let's uh, take an example here of a loading profile. It may look like this, something like this. And here's the tracks. So you have to stay, uh, the wagon has to stay within this, uh, this loading profile at all times during the transport. Uh, and you can, uh, you can look up the uh, loading profile for each railroad and get the, the measurements. So for example, a very common one in Europe is defined by UIC 505-1 uh, called the G1 uh, type. And it's uh, 3.15 meters in, in width here. 3.15 meters. And then there's a certain height in these uh, two. <clears throat> but as I said, they have to, the wagon has to stay within this profile at all times. And so then once you want to design a wagon, uh, you have to consider how much the wagon will sway back and forth depending on the suspension and the load and the, the, the center of gravity of the load. So <clears throat> even when it's weighing, it, it, it has to stay within this, this loading profile. So if you look at the, the wagon, uh, so what, what you have to do is to recalculate this loading profile, uh, taking uh, into account the swaying back and forth, for example, and other, other things too. And then, and then you will get a reduced loading profile that's called the dynamic loading profile. And uh, so the swaying back and forth and another factor is also the wagon length. If you go through a curve like this, and if you have a very long wagon, it will, it will uh, come a lot more outside the railroad in the middle of the, of the railroad wagon. So if, and, and the longer the, the wagon is, the, the, the more it will come out. So, so the longer the railroad wagon you have, the narrower you have to make it to, to stay within this profile. So that is uh, a little bit about basics for uh, designing a, a railroad wagon.